Hi guys and welcome to Moto Scotty. So in the last episode I showed you how to install the Android Auto Radio into my RCZ and as promised now I'm going to show you how to set it up. So basically I'm going to go through most of the gadgets you can use in this uh, Auto Radio like uh, putting in uh, time and date, selecting the language, setting up Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, how to watch videos be it on DVD and on your own videos that you've put on an SD card and so on. But now Let's not waste any more time and get to it. This is the home screen of the system. You got your time and date on the left side and then all the standard and custom apps on the rest of the screen like radio, satellite navigation, Bluetooth and settings on the first page. Notice that it's on car mode by default, showing the most important apps you need while driving. Just swipe the screen to browse the list. You can also switch to full app view where you'll see all the apps in alphabetical order. You can also set up some widgets, but first things first. You can either access the settings menu by touching the icon on the home screen or by pressing the set button on the frame. Press dim at any time to shut down the screen, but keep everything else running. Press it again to bring the screen back to life. Language. On the home screen, select settings. Go to language and input. Select language and scroll until you find your preferred language. Now let's quickly bring it back to English for your eyes only. Date and time. Again in settings, select date and time where you have the possibility to either set time and time zone on automatic or set it all up by yourself. It's pretty straightforward. Just touch set date, actually set it and confirm with OK. Same thing goes for the time and the time zone. At the bottom you can even switch between the Anglo-Saxon and the European 24 hour time format. Hmm, which one will I take? Here's the top tip. Every time you want to go a step back or simply close an app, just touch the return arrow on the top right corner. Radio. On the home screen, either touch the radio icon or push the band button. Touch one of the arrow icons to search for a radio station and save it by pressing and holding one of the 12 storage places. You need to swipe the lower part of the screen to get to the storage buttons 7 to 12. On the lower right side, you can choose between FM and AM radio. DAB radio is not available yet, as I haven't installed the DAB antenna. But I shall keep you posted once I have. If you just click on the home button, you will get back to the home screen. But the radio is still running, as you see the frequency on the left side instead of the time. You can also use the forward and backward buttons on the screen and the frame to browse through your saved channels. Wi-Fi. In the settings menu, click on Wi-Fi. Select the Wi-Fi network you want to connect to and enter the password. Press done and connect. And the little Wi-Fi symbol appears on the top of the screen once connected. This is great if you want to download and update things at home, but will only work on the road if you connect to your smartphone. Bluetooth. Select Bluetooth in the settings menu Enter the auto radio's pin number on your phone and the Bluetooth logo appears on the top of the screen once the connection is established. Now you can easily click on the phone button to look up a contact on your phone or just dial the number. It's connected to the car's microphone. Play Store. Here comes the magic. If you're connected to Wi-Fi, you can go into the Play Store and download whatever app you like. In this example, I'm getting the Here We Go satellite navigation app. Search, select and confirm like on your smartphone and the icon shows up on your home screen once installed. Satellite navigation. Now that the SatNav app is installed, we need to connect it to the shortcut button Navi on the frame. Look for the navigation app and there select the app you want to connect to the physical button. I choose Here We Go. Now every time I press Navi, my Here We Go app will open. Watching a DVD. Warning, watching a DVD is to be avoided when you're driving a car. You're supposed to watch the road. I'm just letting you know that with this system, you can. Just slide the DVD in and it will start automatically. It'll continue where it stopped like the last time. You'll find the usual fast forward and backward as well as stop and the next chapter buttons below as well as the standard home, eject and return buttons on top. 
touch the three dots in the lower left corner for more options. If you are in the main menu of your DVD and want to select a title, press the cross on the lower right corner to open the navigation arrows, select and then confirm with OK. To eject the disc, either press the eject button on the frame on the right side or the one on the screen. Watching content from an SD card. Let's say you want to listen or watch content from a mini SD card. Just insert it in the slot on the lower right side. On the home screen, press File Manager. Select SD and then the file you want to listen to or watch. This particular clip looks very informative. Hi guys and welcome to Motor Scotty. Have you ever Here too, you can simply touch the screen and scroll around on the time bar or pause it by touching the pause button in the middle. Simply press the return button on the top right corner to exit. Parking sensors. So what about the parking sensors? Do they still work? Yes, of course. However, the beeping sound now runs through the little box connected to the auto radio, which unfortunately is a bit irritating. Ready for reverse camera. As you saw in the previous video, I haven't got a reverse camera yet. However, even now, when you put the car in reverse, the radio shuts off and the screen shows static parking lines. I shall get back to you on that once I actually have a reverse camera. Car logo on startup. This is the cherry on top of the cake. Even though the auto radio already blends in well with the style of the dashboard, you can set it up to show your preferred car brand logo on startup. Once again in settings, go to factory settings and enter the password 126. Now select car logo. There you have a very broad list of accurate car manufacturer logos that are pre-saved for you to pick one. From Lada to Mitsubishi to Porsche, whichever you prefer. Hmm, Pontiac's nice, but for a different project. I'm going with the Peugeot line for this one. Press apply. The next time you start your car, your selected car brand logo will show. Issues. Okay, nothing in the world is perfect. Neither is this auto radio. One major thing that is not working properly are the steering wheel keys. Normally, you should be able to go to settings and steering wheel keys to select from a large amount of different functions to be attributed to whichever steering wheel key you like. In this case, the screen is completely blank. There is no button or function to choose from. The circular button as well as the forward and backward buttons on the steering wheel are useless. Funnily enough, the source and the volume buttons work properly. Furthermore, the time and date settings are not yet synchronized with the one on the upper display of the car and the USB and auxiliary plugs in the center console don't work either. Quite a few issues, but I'm going through several troubleshooting procedures with customer support and should have it fixed reasonably soon. Obviously, the wheel keys still don't work, but as soon as it's gonna be fixed, I'm gonna make a third video and show you how to fix it. There you go, guys. This has been a quick tour of how to set up the new Android Auto Radio. I really love it because it's really brought my car back from 2012 to 2017. Another very important thing that pushed me to buy this specific model is that it is Android based, which is specifically useful for the set map. I mean, today I'm using, here we go, maps, but tomorrow it might be another app or an update of that. And if I were to go with the standard system from whatever brand, whatever car I'm driving, there would most likely be no update, or if there is an update, it's super expensive and here it's free. So all in all, it's really good value for money. So I can highly recommend it. Alright guys, let me know what you think of it in the comment section. And as always, until next time.